All right, welcome everybody. You're on Mind Your Biz, and we have Morgan Irvin from Park City Family Office. Uh, and thanks to her, we're able to mind her biz right now. So, uh, Morgan, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you're doing and your mission. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. I am so excited. I am uh, the co founder and managing director of Park City Family Office. I am one of the youngest female directors in the U.S. And, and certainly one of the youngest founders of any family office in the United States, which is really exciting. Uh, my background's in finance. Before that, I was a figure skater. I skated for six years on the U.S. Junior World Synchronized Skating Team, which was a blast, a lot of, a lot of fun, and um, took a lot of dedication. And that really we transitioned quite nicely into finance and how much discipline it takes to, to be in the financial business and inspired me to live the life the way I'm living it now, really values focused. I talk a lot about core values at Park City Family Office and with my own family. And we do a lot of value-based decision-making and making sure we're aligned right and living our life the right way. And once we are doing it ourselves the right way, it's, it's a really fun subject to talk about and educate others on. That's great. I mean, it's nice to see a young woman in that position. You don't really see that too much. I'm usually talking to like, you know, nothing against older gray haired gentlemen, but uh, it's nice to see a little different perspective, um, especially, uh, and you're an athlete. I mean, an accomplished athlete. So um, I have a whole lot of respect for that. And if you're bringing it into the financial game, it's a beautiful thing. Thank you. So Park City family, uh, is that indeed family family or is it, you know, so Park City Family Office, we're a multifamily office. And what that is, is we bring what we believe to be the three core components of wealth under one umbrella. So wealth management, tax and accounting, legal and estate. And so we bring partners to the table that are the best in their field in those three respective industries to collaborate and brainstorm together and strategize for the families that have been really successful. And we find that by being comprehensive and holistic in our approach, we're able to really maximize the families that we work with impact. And so Park City Family Office, we work with families. We believe it starts with people. No matter how much money you have in the world, how much success, it all comes back to you and those people that are around you. That's why we're all working at the end of the day to, to be able to spend time with those we love, whatever that looks like, because family is a very broad term these days. It's not necessarily mom and dad. It could be your colleagues. It could be your best friends. It could just be who you've decided is now your family. Um, and, and that's what Park City Family Office is at its very core. That's the driver. So it's a little different uh, than some of the wealth management companies that I've dealt with. They don't typically bring in the accounting. And what was the other uh, genre of business you brought into that space? We bring in legal and estate. Legal and estate. Whoa. Okay, so you guys are really, you're doing the whole, you're encompassing we're, everything. We're doing it. We're a one-stop shop. We like to think of ourselves as the quarterback. And I kind of like that. that. Thank you. Yeah, and, and you're like absolutely right. Nobody else is doing this. There's a few other multifamily offices in the U.S., but for the large part, we're, we're nothing like the wealth management firms because they won't let their advisors talk about tax and accounting or legal for the fear of liability. So when I was at Goldman Sachs, we couldn't talk about anything other than what we were hired to talk about. And I just felt like that was an incredible disservice to families. You know, we, we say it all the time. You don't know what you don't know. And, and so let us help be your guide and show you what you don't know. Because if it's no, not, I love your, it. yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we've been, my husband and I are building a house right now and I know nothing about home building and I don't really care to, I just want to hire somebody who's really good at it. And, um, and that's what we believe people need with their, with their finances and their wealth as well. You know, if you're a doctor, go be a fabulous doctor, but don't try and figure out your own legal situation and please don't do your own taxes and, you know, let us invest on your behalf. Um, that's what we're really good at. That's good. So you're willing to do the tough stuff. You're willing to take some accountability and that's what a lot of other companies aren't willing to do. So I like, I like the fact, cause they all, they all work in tandem. So yeah, 
it only makes sense. But uh, like you said, a lot of companies don't want the liability and they just want to be good at one thing. Uh, but like you just said, the contractor, you don't want to have to design the, uh, you know, the house. You don't want to have to hire a separate electrician, a separate plumber, a separate floor guy. It's nice to go to one contractor and get it all done under one roof. He's got Literally. the team. He knows what order it needs to be done in. He knows when he's got to order the supplies, when he needs to install the plumbing, you know, what color is going to, you know, he'll bring the designer. We can pick out the tile that's going to go with what the house and the floor plan, the flow look like. There's so many experts that go into it. That's a, we've never used that analogy before, but I, I love it. Yeah. yeah. And I, I that's like what it. we're doing. We don't pretend to know everything, but we know who does and we'll make sure they're sitting at the table when you need them. Perfect. So what, what kind of clients are you guys looking for? Because obviously we're here to chat about your company, get some, you know, spotlight on it. Uh, so what kind of uh, clients are you looking for? The families that we design Park City Family Office for are typically entrepreneurs. They've created something. They're always on the move. It's generation one wealth, which means they made their own money. They're not necessarily the Rockefellers who have family off. They have their own family office and, you know, their money's been passed down for a couple hundred years. These are people new to the game that said, you know, I was, you know, I was a go-getter. I built a tech company and I sold it and I have this, you know, big pile of wealth now. And I don't know what to do with it, but, you know, here's what drives me. And so we talk a lot about what drives the families that we work with and, and what difference they want to make in the world. One of the things we believe at Park City Family Office is that um, wealth is a lot like dynamite. It, it can be used for good or evil. It is going to make an impact. The question is how much impact, right? More wealth, more impact. And the question isn't really, will it make an impact, but what kind of impact do I want it to make? And so we need to be really conscious around wealth. And we have so much room in our society and in life to do better as humans and to do more and to be more conscious. And so our favorite conversations to have, and these are the conversations we have right when we sit down with a family and decide if we're all going to be a good fit for each other is, you know, what do you want to do? What's next? And, and what drives you? What, why are you waking up every day? And everybody that we end up doing business with is driven by a higher purpose to either make things easier for people to you know, be greener, be cleaner, to be socially conscious, or to set up something new, build something new. So our clients are always in motion. And, and that's the kind of people we work with. It's never a question, am I going to retire? Or how much, you know, how much money do I need to make until I am able to retire? It's a question of, you know, I've been so successful, I can do anything I want in the, in the whole world. And so what is that? And how do I maximize my ability to make an impact in that area. Do you guys have a niche to what you like to bring your investors into? Is there certain investments that you guys lean towards? I love this question because, you know, for a lot of the families that work with that have been incredibly successful, they're involved in a lot of different things. They're investing in new businesses over here and over here and over here. They're being asked to advise on different opportunities. Um, so we sit down with families and we work on what's called an investment policy statement. And that's a strategy around your wealth. So we basically make a playbook for families. You know, here's this piece, and this is going to be in a, in, you know, a long-term outlook. And we've got great managers that can diversify. And, and then the families really drive what they want to be invested in. We're working with a fabulous family out of uh, San Francisco right now. They've been very successful and, and they're incredibly environmentally focused. And so when we talk about investments with them, they don't want to invest in a single company unless it's ESG. And that's a category in, in investing. It's environmental, social, and governance. And so these are companies that are doing things so in a socially conscious or environmentally conscious way. And those are the only companies that they'll invest in on the stock market. And so that's what we do for them. We let our families drive and invest in what's important to them and what's aligned with their values. That makes sense. And ESG investments are on the rise because people are becoming more socially conscious and environmentally conscious. It's a new kind of wealth that's, uh, you know, budding out there. So it I is. think it's great. 
you know, and it's so funny because ESGs used to totally be considered the dogs in the industry about 10 years ago. And, you know, what's cool in today's day and age is with the right team in place, you know, you can do good while doing good. Um, you know, not only is ESG a, you know, a very noble thing to do and aligned with many of our families, values and beliefs, but, but they're also not really missing out on, you know, performance necessarily, which is really pretty cool. Perfect. So I'm wondering also now for the flip side, now that I know kind of what kind of clients you're looking for, are you also looking for things to invest into, or do you pretty much have that on lock where, you know, you got your real estate, you got your stocks, you got your, you know, everything worked out already, or are you in search of new investments? We believe that investing as a whole is really a commoditized business. There's a lot of people that do a great job at it. You know, we think the real value add at Park City Family Office is bringing those three components together and having a more impactful conversation around it. And then the generational planning and discussions that we do. We sit down with the families that we work with and and we hold family summits where we talk to the kids about what success means and what success looks like. And we talk about expectations. Money used to be this really taboo thing. And we're trying to break that barrier down and, and have really productive conversations around it. You know, not talking about it is not the answer. Your kids see it, they know that you have it. And so what does that mean to them? And how do we make sure that the kids aren't disenfranchised or aren't sitting on the bench for the next 50 years of their life because they don't think that they need to participate? And so I think one of the most valuable things we do with the families we work with is we keep the next generation engaged and we help coach the parents, the matriarch and the patriarch through what that looks like and how to have those really awkward conversations with your kids, you know, because it doesn't matter how much money you have. Families are all having the same conversations. Are we paying for college? What kind of degree do you need to go get if we're paying for college? Are we not paying for college? You know, and, and should you get a job? Are you expected to get a summer job? Are you paying for your own gas? You know, these are really, th- these conversations I think are happening in 90% of American households and, or they're not happening, which is even more awkward. I grew up in a very British family where we just swept everything underneath the rug and uh, it was a constant guessing game. And so <laughs> we try and dispel a lot of the guessing and make sure when the Kids go off in the world, they know what to expect, what not to expect, and what's expected from them, what their role is in the family. And and that is just what lights me up, what I love to do, and and what I think makes the biggest difference with the families we work with and and what's going to make a difference in the world ultimately. You know, having an inspired generation that knows they have a responsibility to leave the world or something better than they found it. No, I love I love the fact you're incorporating the younger generation in the family, because I find that to be one of the biggest gaps in generational wealth is that you got the the matriarch and the patriarch that, you know, set the foundation, built wealth. And, you know, the younger generation is just kind of going through life. And then all of a sudden somebody dies and there's just a huge gap in what the younger generation wants to do with the wealth or the business and because they were never included in the conversations. And yeah. ultimately, I've seen a lot of families lose their wealth uh, because of that gap. And I think it's a great idea to incorporate the younger generation from the jump of, uh, you know, the uh, strategy, because they can be a part of it early in the game, even at a small level, and be prepared when they are in more of the driving seat instead of driving it into a hole, which I've seen plenty, plenty of. So I I love that idea. There's a great analogy that we like to use with uh, the families we work with. We like to think of wealth like a relay race. So you have the baton and the baton is your wealth. And you have runner number one who's either the matriarch or the patriarch or both. And and they're running. And and as the person that's going to be receiving the wealth, you're not standing there just waiting for somebody to come running, you know, 15 miles an hour and, you know, try and catch the baton while you're standing still, right? You're going to drop it. You're going to drop the wealth. It's gone. What we That's teach true. families to do, which is like a relay race is, you know, as you start to see the wealth coming around the corner, you start running 
and you pick up your pace and there's a period of time where both runners on a relay team are running side by side. And it's when they're running at the same speed that we see the baton pass from one runner to the other. And that's how well should be. You know, once the next generation starts to repair and they start running and they pick up speed. And, and so that's the education process, starting to bring them in slowly and then building up power and speed until both generations are pacing at the same rate. And that's when we think is a really great time to, to do that wealth handoff. And, and maybe it's, you know, well, maybe it's during the lifetime of mom and dad, or maybe pieces of it are during the lifetime. Maybe we don't wait until the kids are 65 or 70 and mom and dad have just died because what kind of impact can you, you know, you can do so much more earlier, but there has no, to be education great. first. Yeah. I like that analogy. <laughs> the baton. Yeah. yeah. That's great. So what, um, what are some of the, the things that you're hearing from potential clients that really, I mean, they're just so far removed from reality. What are some of the mistakes families are making before they get into a wealth management situation? What is the most common uh, thread that you're hearing that just like, oh, that's such a mistake. That's uh, not having a plan or not thinking that they have enough to need one. Everybody needs one. We have a, a very tragic but fabulous example of um, a recent event here in Park City. Um, Tony Shea moved into town about a year and a half ago. Um, right during COVID, Tony Shea was the founder of Z- Zappos, the online shoe distributor. He was worth a few billion dollars and he moved to Park City and he started buying up all these houses. And then he started moving his family and his friends out to Park City and he bought a huge huge house in the center of town. He had big hopes and dreams to revitalize Park City's nightlife, to add in a bunch of art. You know, this guy had billions of dollars. He had people around him all the time um, that were supposedly advising him. And last fall, he passed away very tragically. It was very sad. Um, But what came to light one of the things that came to light that I'm going to talk about is, is that he had no estate planning done. He had no trust, no wills, no named beneficiaries, you know? So, so what happens, right? This enormous estate then has to go. Nobody knows where it's supposed to go because he, you know, for some reason, somebody dropped the ball there and he had nobody looking out for him or nobody at his back and said, man, you got billions of dollars, you need to go get an estate, an estate plan set up, a trust, a will. What happens? Where does it go? Who's going to take care of you or get to sign off on, you know, what happens in the hospital on your behalf? And so his estate is, you know, ended up going to the state where it sits in probate. Probate costs about eight to 10% of everything. And so, you know, for just a billion dollars, right? That's a hundred million dollars, not going to your family or charities or causes. It's going just to the state where it's settled in. And, you know, that's one piece of it. And then the other piece is, you know, who's in charge now? And, you know, who's going to get left with this huge burden um, as the assigned executor of liquidating all of these properties and, you know, passing out even little things like, you know, his favorite watch or his favorite knife or um, whatever, whatever it is. And, and so he actually had post-its on the wall of his bedroom, the story goes, and they said, you know, send $10,000 to this person, you know, help this person with a horse, or I don't know what they said, but that was the only piece of evidence in the court as to where maybe money should go, or things should go, or assets should go. And so they're trying to kind of piece together what his wishes would have been. And so on a really big scale, um, you don't need to have billions of dollars. You don't even need to have hardly anything at all, but you know, if you really love your family, you don't want them sitting in court trying to settle out your estate for the next five years. And you've sure worked too hard for it during your life. So, so why would you do something in your death that you wouldn't have done during your life? Take the time, have that awkward conversation, you know, tell those you love who's going to be in charge if something happens and where to find the document. Oh, that's a, that's a great example. It's unfortunate, but uh, so tragic. He, he dies for nothing if a lot of people don't learn from it. So yeah, it's good to highlight that tragedy and also the tragedy of the estate. 
Um, uh. Now, here's the, you know, here's a tough question in a way. There's a lot of clients out there that need help, need management, need a plan, but they don't even know that they may have enough wealth. And I know it's hard to put a number on it because everyone has different kinds of wealth. There's liquid wealth, there's, you know, there's asset wealth. So is there a range of whether it's liquid or asset where they should really start thinking about getting some help? Because like I said, a lot of people don't know that they have enough to need that kind of planning. They think, oh, well, I sold a few properties, you know, I have, you know, half a million in the bank and yeah. I'm doing okay. So how do you, uh, we need to educate, you know, cause some people watching probably need help and they don't even realize that they have established enough success that requires help. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's such a funny thing because nobody ever thinks that they have, it, it doesn't matter if you're the guy with a hundred million dollars or you're the person with a hundred bucks in the bank account. Both those people don't think they have as much as the next guy. Okay. Um, and so it's all about perspective, but you know, what I would say to that is if, if you're getting up and going to job or if you're working hard at anything, even if you've worked hard and, and now you're retired, get, consult an expert. I mean, you are getting up, going to work every day and, and working hard to make something. And so don't leave it up to chance. Don't guess. Don't look on the internet because there is good information and bad information and, and probably more of the latter. Um, but if, if you're working hard for anything that's coming your way or, or just wanting to, to know if you're even on track, get an expert. I mean, you're not going to do your own physical. You're not giving yourself your own you know, your own flu shot, you're going somewhere for it. So why would your wealth be different? That's true. Everyone's golden nugget is different. If that's what you have, then that's what's important to you. And so, you know, take the time to protect what's important to you. I love that question. We get it all yeah, the time. Yeah, it's tough, but... Nobody but thinks uh, they know. have enough. They see the guy next to them and they just got a newer lawnmower or they got a, you know, their kids are riding newer bikes or, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, but everybody thinks that somebody has more than them. That's right. The Joneses, they always have more. Uh-huh. Absolutely. I think that, and on our day and age, the media and the access to it and how quickly information, you know, spins and turns and gets disseminated. I think that there's even more, more of that feeling now than ever. You know, there's, there's no silly questions. We, you know, I think it, it's just the only silly thing is to not ask if you don't know. That's it. I tell everybody that. I said, there's never a dumb question because you're dumb if you don't ask and you sit there not knowing something. So never a dumb question. Absolutely. Never. So are you ever, you know, on the search? Because we have a lot of entrepreneurs and inventors and people with really amazing new businesses that are just growing under the radar. Do you have any any things or specifically that you're looking for? Because I always ask investors and I ask, you know, wealth management companies and, you know, what are you looking for? And then, you know, you always hear, you know, the common one, oh, we're looking to get into, you know, crypto in some fashion. Uh, we're looking to get into whatever's trending generally, right? So right. Is, is, is there anything that you guys are looking for uh, on the horizon that, maybe some of our audience might be able to fill in some gaps uh, by any chance. I always ask that because like I said, there's a lot of really great businesses that are just under the radar, so underrated. Uh, but if they had some investment behind it, um, it would really be a great, you know, marriage and synergy. Yeah. You're, you're asking about what's the next hot trend. That maybe you're maybe not so much could be a trend, could be some things that you guys are in your wheelhouse that that you need more of, uh, because we find investors, you know, when they they become an expert, let's say on something, they want to get more of it because they're really great. You know, it could be as, as simple as real estate in their locality. Yeah, uh, could be hotels. You know, some people say, you know, we've really got a stronghold on strategies for buying up hotels. Uh, and they, 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 you know, they express themselves and they ask, and I want to be that platform where people can really connect. I'm not just looking to talk and, and, uh, you know, and spotlight. I, I really want people to get something out of it. They can chew on also. 
Uh, so we've been able to unite some great partners together. Yeah. So I always ask, and that's why I'm asking no, in case I, there's something. You know, I think the best advice that we give the families that we work with, because because we have a lot of clients that are like, or well, we don't we don't have clients like this because we do a lot of education, but we have people come to us all the time and say, you know what, I think the market's overbought, and we're hearing this all the time right now. I think the market's overbought. You know, I, I need to get out. I want to sell everything. You know, I think we're in a bubble. And, um, you know, what we tell the families we work with is that, listen, you know, it takes two good decisions to time the market, not one. You got to know when to get out and when to get back in. And this one right here, people are always too late. And so, you know, investing or, is- a Or too time. early. Or too <laughs> early. <laughs> And, you know, there were so many people that, you know, panicked and got out in 2008 when it was down here, you know, and they had already lost half or more than half. And, and then they didn't feel comfortable getting back in again until up here. So not only did they lose this, they lost this part too. And so for the people that could stay in it, that had, you know, good guidance, good advisors and, and weathered the storm, their money you know, the, the market, the S&P was up 200% or something, you know, it, it doubled and, you know, it, it paid off to be the, to be patient, to put your blinders on, to keep faith, but, but having a good team also helps that process and, and helps give the peace of mind. If you're with great, great minds and in good hands, and I would certainly recommend guidance and I would tell people that, you know, it's a, it's a long game. Warren Buffett always says that, you know, buy and hold. Uh, that's been his strategy yeah. and has, you know, made him a billion billionaire many times over. Because he knows a little something. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I think it's great. Uh, sounds like you really got a good level head for this. Um, clearly, you guys are doing something a little different, which is great. Uh, you know, we're embodying the accounting, the wealth management, you know, everything in, in, uh, in one shop, that's, that's definitely makes things life easier. So yeah, is there anything else that we need to know? Uh, because you really you shed some light on some great topics that people need affirmations constantly, you know, they need to hear that. So they Absolutely. don't screw up. Well, you know, I would encourage anybody listening to this, if they've liked what they've heard to follow us, Park City Family Office, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, check out our website, all of these talks that I do, um, all the speaking engagements I do are recorded. They're on our website. You can go back and listen to them. We also provide a lot of educational materials. We believe that, you know, access to information and, and good information and knowledge should be for everybody. Um, no matter how much you have or how little you have, everybody should have access to great information. And so, you know, I would love people to, to just learn more, take the time, you know, listen, you don't know what you don't know. And, uh, you know, let us help. We love my business partner, Bruce Greenwald and I were, we're doing speaking engagements all the time. We love it. Um, but we believe it's our duty to, you know, to, to educate, to inspire, to help coach the next generation and, and coach them up, let them earn, you know, work hard, earn what they have and then do great things with it. And, and, yeah. you know, ma maximize it. We're all, we're all here working because, you know, not only do we love it, but, you know, probably because we need it. And, Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. And that's great advice yeah. because everyone's scared to get help with their money. It's because they don't know. They don't know who they're talking to. They don't know their history. So like you said, educate, get on their website, listen to them talk, get to know who you're about to put your life in their hands. Uh, and you won't be so scared anymore if you see what they're doing, if you hear what they're saying. So I think that's a great, you know, that's great advice is, um, you know, you won't be scared if you get to know them. And the only way you get to know is listening. And if, if you're providing some great online so-called like tutorials and, and just speaking on uh, how your company operates, that's one way to get to know you. So um, where can people find you? Where's the best way to find you and your company if they want to reach out? Facebook, Instagram, Park City Family Office. You can check me out, Morgan Irvin, but information's power, you know, and go find some power today. Excellent stuff. Morgan, it's been a pleasure to chat with you. I wish you a whole lot of health and 
wealth with uh, Park City Family Thank Office, God. and I hope you can help a lot of a lot of other families out. I mean, people need help. So uh, again, thanks for letting us mind your biz. Thank you so much for having me on Mind Your Biz. I love it. I have fun. Have a have a good one. All right. Thanks so much. This was such a blast. The business.